Hello everyone, welcome to, to the second part of our lecture. Uh, in this pre-recorded lecture, we'll discuss the channel implementation of your distribution channel or your marketing um, channel, otherwise known as your intermediaries. Okay, so we'll talk about channel power, uh, getting it, using it, and of course, keeping it. Okay, so first, uh, what is channel power? When we speak of your channel power, we're, we're talking about the power in terms of your distribution um, or intermediaries or your marketing um, intermediaries. So when you say channel power, we're talking about the ability to alter the behavior of another channel member okay or the potential to influence or the ability of one channel member to get another channel member to do something it otherwise would not have done so this talks about the power of the manufacturer the distributor the wholesalers okay and the different retail industries okay so why marketing channel uh, require power so these there are several reasons such as number one uh, due to interdependence of the channel members so marketing channel members must work with each other to serve the end users so like for example your manufacturer must work together with the distributors or the wholesalers the retailers in order to serve the end users so there is interdependence okay next is of course to gain cooperation and to protect themselves so to protect their business to protect themselves okay so for example here let's take a look at this scenario so consider the scenario of a manufacturer that would like to set a high price at wholesale to gain more revenue from its one and only or your exclusive retailer so the retailer to preserve its margin or its profit then will set a higher retail price that is exclusivity will permit the retailer to uphold its price as a result retail demand will be lower than the level that would maximize the total channels profit okay so there you go that's the reason why marketing channel actually require power. All right, so let's talk about your power and dependence. So supposing uh, A's power over B increases, thereby with B's there would be B's dependence on A. So if, for example, a certain company has power or it has a higher power over another company, let's say company a and company b let's say company a okay has higher power than company b then uh, of course um what happens would be the company that has weaker power would be dependent on the company that has higher power so dependence of b on a is greater when b gets greater utility meaning to say there is higher value benefit or satisfaction there are fewer alternatives of that utility uh, b can be find okay or can find sorry so there would be switching of costs so dependence is the utility provided multiplied by scarcity of alternatives all right moving on so let's talk about how okay you can form a reasonable estimate of how much a channel member depends on you so number one it could be direct method this is to assess both elements that is utility and scarcity separate and then combine them so to assess utility um, you could tally the benefit you offer to do uh, sorry you offer so to do this it is important to understand the channel partner's goals, to understand how their organization values uh, uh, what they provide, okay, something like that. 
So that is your direct method. So you assess both utility and scarcity. So utility and scarcity meaning to say you assess the benefits, okay, that maybe a certain company offers and maybe scarcity, something that they are lacking, okay, and then try to combine them. Okay, so to assess how easily you could be replaced, you have to consider the two factors. Who could be or become your competitors? Or what other organization exists or might enter the market that could supply what you actually provide? Okay. So, for example, let's take a look at this example. So, consider a manufacturer, P, of specialty steel supplying X and Y. So, how much power does P have over each or has over each of its distributors? So, for X and Y, the manufacturer's brand opened the customer door for the distributor's salespeople who then sell other products in their portfolio. So benefits, therefore, are substantial. But if manufacturer P has three competitors making equivalent product, so P appears to be easily replaceable. Therefore, Y does not depend on P, and P has little power over Y. So the situation is different for X. A small distributor is struggling to establish itself in its marketplace. So the other manufacturers or a manufacturer will not supply X on the same terms as uh, will P. Okay, there you go. So this is an example. Okay, so another uh, means of measuring dependence is through proxy indicator. So, percentage of their sales or profit you provide. So, the higher the percentage, the more important you are. And therefore, the more dependent they are. Meaning to say, if you provide higher percentage in terms of sales or profit, okay, if your company provides higher sales or pr profit, then, okay, the more that, other companies would be dependent to your company. So your performance in the channel compared to competitors. So the greater your superiority over them, so the greater your superiority over your competitors, and the fewer alternatives exist at their at your level of performance, and therefore the greater dependence or the greater their dependence to your company or your organization. All right, now let's take a look at the five sources of power. So in distribution channel, there are also five sources of power. So we have reward, coercive, expert, legitimate, and reference. Okay, first, so when we speak of your reward power, it talks about the ability to grant the reward. So must perceive that the reward will be granted. Reward may not be immediate. Okay, so when we speak of a reward, it's a benefit given in exchange for compliance in the channel. So for distribution channels, of course, um, it puts greater emphasis on the financial aspect of reward, which means that there is um, higher financial uh, benefit in terms of profit. Okay, so favorable channel policies would help uh, business, build business, okay, provide financial reward, promote reseller to the end users. Okay, but we also have here your coercive reward. So, this is the ability to inflict punishment. Okay, how will they inflict punishment? How will this channel of distribution inflict punishment? So, perhaps they could block the access to the market. What else? Reduce margins, profits. There would be slow-moving shipments. Okay, 
or maybe re withdrawal of reward like maybe exclusive territorial rights or maybe discounts something like that uh, it's framed as punishments or acts of aggression and it could lead to retaliation okay there you go so let's take a look at this example so in the u.s large supermarket uh, chains extract substantial slotting allowance or fee from branded producers in order to stock new products other examples of coercive power are reduction in margins or the withdrawal of or reward previously granted like for example as i mentioned earlier exclusive territorial rights and maybe slowing down of shipments all right we also have your expert power so when we speak of your expert power it's a knowledge or expertise that other channel member okay lack expertise in terms of maybe information so expert power is based on the target perception that the influencer has knowledge expertise that is useful and that the target does not possess it like for example division of labor specialization and of course comparative advantage so in expert power of course it definitely requires trust what else durability of expert power and possessing valuable information including expert judgments the channel could use but not or but does not have okay let's take a look at this example so supermarket in north america uh, supermarkets receive huge amounts of consumer purchase data from their checkout scanner so to turn this information to expert insight they give their data for each product category to selected supplier who use their knowledge of the type of product to see the patterns in millions of transactions so supermarkets have the information power over suppliers so supermarkets definitely have the expert power over their suppliers so their suppliers then invest in converting this uh, information okay perhaps to improve their products or to create new products all right we also have here your legitimate power so it is to be seen as the right and proper or as right and proper it comes from laws contracts and agreements as well as from industry norms and from norms and values is specified to channel relationship so the influencer has legitimate power so whenever the target feels a sense of duty of being bound to carry out the influencers request so there are two kinds of legitimate power okay we have your legal legitimate power and traditional legitimate power okay so in addition to that when you speak of your legitimate power uh, it's conferred by the government coming from the nation's law of contract and laws of commerce so legitimate authority exists objectively so contracts were in channel members right with each other so for example when a supervisor gives directives to subordinates the subordinate believe that the supervisor has a right to direct them in certain manner and therefore will generally conform to superiors desires okay there you go all right another example in terms of your uh, distribution channel so patent and trademark laws uh, give owners a certain amount of freedom and jurisdiction in supervising the distribution of their products so franchising that confer legitimate power to demand behavior that is not required in conventional channels so franchisees have signed contracts with franchisor obliging the franchisees to maintain a certain appearance for facilities to honor standards procedures procedures uh, set 
by the franchisors to pay advertising fees or royalties and to buy from source approved by franchisors why because franchise franchisors they are believed to have expert power okay all right uh, legitimate power another is your legitimate power your traditional legitimate power it's a bit subjective okay or ephemeral it does not exist without the consent of the target so the target believes that the influencer should or has the right to expert influence or exert sorry influence and that the target has an obligation to accept it so it stems basically from norms values and beliefs so, okay it's based on values internalized by the target okay so when you speak of belief okay so in here one may believe that a channel member deserves to be accorded to a certain deference or respect perhaps because of its track record or exemplary management so example the largest firm could be considered the leader okay in cha or the channel captain by another channel member or members in this case then uh, legitimate power is available to that firm okay when we speak of norms this is an expectation of normal behavior that arise in the channel to find roles and effectively confer legitimate power on certain channel members so example distributors in the information technology industry have a different power a norm than many industries okay they are far from likely to honor a supplier's request to name their customers and detail their shipment okay there you go so this is an example you can simply read it okay all right so norms exist not only within indus industries but within certain channels some of which manage to build such norms okay what are these norms solidarity role integrity and mutuality so solidarity each side expect the other to focus on the relationship as a whole rather than thinking transaction by transaction role integrity each side expects the other to perform complex rules that cover not just individual transaction but also covers a multitudes or multitude of issues not related to any single transaction and then mutuality each side expect other to divide their joint or return in a way that assure adequate return to both okay so here is an example you can just simply read it okay all right okay so moving on another is your referent power so other channel members wish to associate with the company so like for example a referent power exists when company a views company b as a standard of reference and therefore wishes to identify publicly with b so for downstream channel members when we speak of your downstream channel members these are your uh, wholesalers retailers okay uh, for downstream channel members would like to carry high stat, uh, status or status brands to benefit from their own oh. image for app upstream channel members uh, so upstream channel members are your manufacturers okay um, upstream channel members rent the reputation of their prestigious downstream firms okay so referent power in addition so retailers want to be associated with prestigious brands manufacturers on the other hand want to be associated with prestigious retailers so for example sm prides itself for carrying branded clothes so the brand or the manufacturer naman on the other hand prides itself to be carried by sm outlet okay right 
So let's take a look at the balance of power or the dependence. Okay, so channel power is relative. So channel outcome rests on the balance of power. So for example, if company A has a power on its own, but so does company B. Okay, focus on one relationship at a time. So rather than making general statements about power, count up not only the reward company A can bestow to company B, but the mutual benefit they can get from each other. All right, so net dependence or interdependence should be assessed in addition to each other's or each side's dependence rather so high mutual dependence there is high and balanced power okay effective or is effective way to achieve coordination or a win-win situation and encourages cooperation by blocking exploitation so another way of balancing power or dependence is that there should be high levels of value added Okay, in terms of your imbalance power or dependence, it occurs uh, and would lead to, of course, exploitation, conflict, or countermeasures, wherein they will find alternatives, perhaps form a coalition, or, you know, um, exit the business, or perhaps offer greater utility to others. Okay, what else? They're, they will live with it or tolerant tolerate sorry imbalanced dependence or may be restrained by stronger party in order for them to protect their reputation okay all right so how does a company manage conflict to increase channel coordination so as i mentioned earlier these are the results of your imbalanced power therefore they should be managing conflict okay in managing conflict first when we speak of your channel conflict this is a behavior by a channel member that is that is in opposition to its channel counterpart so it is um, opponent centered and direct in which the goal objective or object sought is controlled by counterpart so when we speak of conflict of course it means to collide so channel conflict is a state of opposition conflict is a normal state in a channel conflict arises for the purpose of maximizing channel performance okay so conflict occurs when one member of the channel views its upstream, okay, the manufacturers, producers, or downstream, the retailers or wholesalers, partner as adversary or as an opponent. So upstream and downstream channels or channel members attempt to block each other. In contrast, there is competition. Okay, when a behavior in which a channel member is working for a goal or objective controlled by a third party. The third party such as, of course, customers, regulators, or competitors. Okay, so these are the stages of conflict. Number one, there is latent conflict. It occurs when the conditions are right. Okay. Uh, for con contention, but the organization is not yet aware of it. Perceived conflict, okay, the channel member or channel members already sense the opposition of some sort, okay. There is opposition of views, of perception, of sentiments, of interests, okay. And then it would now escalate to felt or effective conflict wherein channel members okay would already um what's this lead to um you know detrimental emotions such as tension ang anxiety anger frustration and hostility so when conflict reaches this level organizational or organization members rather begin to personalize their differences and then 
again, it would escalate, of course, to manifest conflict. So this opposition is visible or it's already manifested because it is expressed in behavior. So usually appears as blocking each other's initiative and perhaps withdrawing uh, support. So there are four kinds of information together and combine to form an index of manifest conflict. So we have here counting up the issues, the importance, frequency of disagreement, and intensity of dispute. Okay, so there would be consequences of conflict. So, okay, it could drive each other to improve their performance all right so if they work through their differences they could do better and challenge each other to break old habits and assumptions so you want okay so these are the consequences of conflict so functional conflict is desirable if members Okay, would communicate uh, frequently, would establish outlets for explain, uh, expressing their grievances, will critically review their past actions, devise and implement more equitable split of system resources, develop a more va balanced distribution of power, uh, develop standardized ways to deal with future conflict and keep it within bounds. So, these are some of the major sources of conflict. So, built-in differences, of course, in terms of their point of view. So, if they have different goals and objectives, okay, there could be conflict. Differing perception of reality. So, different perceptions in terms of the attribute of products. What else? Uh, perceptions, differences in perceptions in terms of application it served and for which segment or in terms of competition. Another major source of conflict would be clash over domains in terms of their roles okay, as channel members, their responsibilities including their territories. Okay, so what could be the solution to resolve conflict? Okay, there could there should be communication. So more frequent, thorough, candid communication involving more people in both organizations, uh, which could go a long way toward rectifying performance problems of cross-cultural channel. Another is they have to develop greater sensitivity to business culture of each other okay all right so these are some of the major sources of conflict or domain conflict okay so multiple channel okay um, using more than one route to get the same market so an example here is Starbucks uh, so, Starbucks follows this approach as their distribution design includes using a direct retail system by selling in company-owned stores, a direct marketing system by selling via direct mail, and single-party selling system by selling through grocery stores. So, multi-channel approach expands distribution and allows marketers to reach a wider market. However, marketers must be careful with the approach or approach rather due to potential um, for channel conflict okay so here you go another example of downstream members who may lose motivation okay could is coca-cola there coca-cola in japan faced a strong opposition from its retailer when it stalled or installed vending machines. Eventually, Coke was able to do market research to show that it was correct in its claim that vending machines were used for different occasions and different value to the same customers. So these are some of the ways to address multiple channel conflict. 
okay there should be a pricing scheme offer more support more service more products okay um, offer the same product under different brand names to different channels sell primary part of the product line through one channel and secondary or peripheral product to another All right, now let's discuss your grain market. These are actually unwanted channels. So when we speak of your grain market, um, the sale of authorized branded through product or through an authorized dis distribution channel can be contrasted with black market. So black market is illegal, okay? Uh, black market or counterfeiting which involves selling fake goods or branded ones okay so in terms of your gray market the development of gray market uh, okay coming from suppliers offer differential pricing to different channel members suppliers practice pricing differently to different geographical or geographic markets Domestic products sold through high service, high price channel at home, development of emerging markets, and worldwide liberalization of trade. Price differences exist across boundaries or territories. Okay, so who are these unauthorized outlets? Usually, authorized um, distributors and dealers, often in other markets professional arbitrators arbitrate arbitrators import or export house okay there you go individual professional traders okay or the protesting victim so ultimate suppliers of unauthorized outlet the suppliers through the home office or through its foreign division okay so suppliers are tolerant to gray market under uh, several circumstances such as uh, okay uh, violators are difficult to detect or document when the potential uh, for one channel to free ride another channel member is actually low when the product is more mature when more mature meaning to say it's already earning when the violator the distributor that is supplying the gray market does not carry competing brands in suppliers product category All right okay so let's talk about your conflict management so reaction from dealers upon destructive incidences the dealers may actually blame themselves okay the dealers blame the supplier or the dealers may blame the environment so there are five types of reaction from dealers to deal with disputes against suppliers could be passive acceptance they will accept it saying or doing very little about the issue or venting complaining vigorously about without any taking action or maybe neglecting the supplier or threatening to resign the line or engaging the supplier in constructive discussion Okay, so in conflict resolution strategies, there are two approaches. It could be develop institutionalized mechanism. So joint members uh, in trade association or distributor councils for two-way communication or maybe exchange personnel programs or co-optation to share responsibility and third-party uh, mechanism. And then the second approach is use common norms to resolve conflict in terms of flexibility. You have to be flexible, okay? Uh, information exchange and solidarity, okay? You work for mutual benefit. All right, so that ends our lecture for uh, your ST400.